Lawn bowling is more than just a game. There's no talking on the green. Continue in 1972 prices. And nothing is soft. It's sticking right up and right up. Welcome to Without Bias. Brought to you by Apia. Proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Apia, dedicated specialists ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia, get set, go. Local legends wanted. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls clubs near me. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Without Bias, our dedicated lawn bowl show, part of the sporting capital uh, on SEN. Sam Hargraves here with you, uh, and it's always a pleasure to be joined by our very first guest. Before I get to him, though, we've got a great show. Chris Wallace is going to join us. He's involved in all the interaction and engagement for Bowls Australia, so he'll join us in the second segment just to hear about the effect that COVID had on participation in lawn bowls and what they've been able to do to bring people back to the bowling green. Uh, it'll be fascinating to have a chat to him. Uh, our next guest is a first guest though is a very good man uh he is a an australian jackaroo he's represented australia at commonwealth games he is a star both on and off the bowling green he does a ripping job does barry lester uh wine connoisseur there's not much he can't do barry lester hello to you mate sammy thanks for having me on the show mate it's been a while and uh thanks for the intro buddy no, uh, my pleasure. BCIB, Jackaroo, uh, you've been in action today, I'm told. How have you been faring? State, is it state championships in Queensland? Yeah, it's a really good program up here, Bowls Queensland Run, Sam. It's, uh, it's two weeks, basically, and they, they get right through all the disciplines over those two weeks from uh, mixed through to singles, triples, pairs and fours. Instead of them dragging out over maybe four or five months, um, they, they just get them done in two weeks, and it's a really good program, and and if you want to, um, you know, push for selection in, in terms of the sport, make your state sides, make your district sides, or even higher honours in, in representing your country one day, it generally starts with trying to win a, a club event. And then if you can do well in state events, that's that's what it's all about. So managed to pick up the state triples the other day with uh, a couple of really good friends, Nick Cahill and Aaron Sheriff, who's also an Australian Jackaroo, and young Nick being an emerging Jackaroo, but bowed out of the pairs today and the single start on Saturday. So really loving it. The weather's been really good and... And but we had a we had a little hailstorm last night, but that shifted through quickly, and and we're we're back out at, out there today. So it's a, a really good couple of days, mate. Uh, Baz, obviously COVID had its effect last year on lawn bowls, as it did to everything and and everyone. Finally, we're now to get back to some competitive stuff, and what better way to do it than with the bowls Premier League back in Feb? BPL twelve got underway. You were one of the participants. What's it been like? You've had two of those now. How's it felt just to be out there, especially when an event like that, which is like the big bash cricket of lawn bowls? Uh, it's fun. It's exciting. It's fast. There's uh, energy and music. Uh, it's brilliantly done. You must have loved being back out there. Yeah, no doubt. No, uh, you know we, we we love playing the game of bowls at any level, but uh, I've been fortunate the last probably good 10 or plus years to be playing at the highest level and I really longed for that I, I really craved and missed it I really wanted to play um, high, level, high level bowls as soon as sort of COVID cleared up a bit and 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 we had to wait a little bit as soon as the BPL came around yeah you're just frothing mate you just couldn't wait to get out there and and get in and get involved and I, I'm lucky to represent the Melbourne Pulse and uh, yeah get out there and play with Gary Kelly and, and Alan Ryan um, yeah it was great fun mate so Moama put on a great um, show and so did Pine Rivers and yeah, there's a little problem happening with the BPL at the moment. We've got, there's a team called the Tweedheads Ospreys. They keep winning. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm actually in the company of one of the players at the moment, Chloe Stewart. And uh, yeah, they they keep winning. So there's an issue happening there. But we've got to try our best to stop that, mate, because uh, it's a great event. But we just can't have the same team keep winning. <laughs> yeah, they're dominating. They're a bit like the Perth Scorchers in the early days of the Big Bash. Um, BPL 13 was in Brizzy. Um, obviously another great event. What is it about this tournament that you love so much? What 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 excites you when you think BPL? I love the fact that it, it can be won or lost pretty much within a, in a couple of ends because you, know, you can't afford at that level to have uh, one or two bad bowls or even one or two bad ends and that can result in dropping a number and then you lose the set. And ultimately, you probably go on and lose the game, but... Um, the tie-break element's really good too. You know, if you're a set-all and it comes down to one-hand shootout, once again, you need to bring it and there's no uh, there's no way that you can escape that. So you must be on your game all the time and you're playing with and against the best there is. And uh, post, um, post-COVID in Australia, in terms of being able to host these BPL events, we haven't had uh, some of the international players we, we would normally have, but... 
um, usually we would, and that makes it even better. So um, the fact that we get great TV coverage and great media coverage, we get to promote the sport really well, and to be able to play at host venues like Moama and, and Pine Rivers, who do such a great job, is, is why, why we love to play the game and, and get out there and showcase our skills. Uh, will we be seeing you in action June for the Australian Open? No doubt. Yeah, June 12 to, to 25. Uh, my host, uh, sorry, my home club, Burley Heads Bowls Club, will be a host club. And yeah, it's it's the best event in the world by far. And it's amazing to think th- throughout those two weeks that, yeah, you know, the sun, sun is shining, the weather's great, the greens are good, and people from all around Australia will be will be travelling to, to play in it. So it's a... Um, it's a, an event close to me because um, yeah, it means a lot and I was lucky enough to win one a few years ago and and you get to play once again with and against some of the best. And I get to team up with Corey Wedlock in the pairs and he's just absolutely on fire at the moment. So I'm glad I'm on his side and not against him, put it that way, Sammy. Uh, with our bias on a Thursday night, a part of the sporting capital on SEN, Barry Lester, our first guest. It's all for Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted to search Bowls clubs near me and Apia. Proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Apia dedicated specialist ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia get set go. Question off the text here for you, Barry Lester. Um, Lee Schreiner just won his seventh Victorian champion of champions titles. How did he not play more for Australia? That's come through off the text. Um, well, I think, you know, Lee moved around a little bit. Um, you know, he, he did have a, a stint in the Australian squad. Um, then he retired actually quite a few years ago. Um, quite suddenly I didn't know sort of where, where why that sort of come about but Lee decided to retire and I think since then he hasn't been available to play for Australia for quite a few years so um but Lee his singles record speaks for itself um we've had some great singles players playing for Australia for quite a few years um but uh yeah you know I mean he's he's a, an amazing player with really really good resume and there's there's a lot of players out there who could knock down the door tomorrow as well. And we're very fortunate to have a lot of good players out there. And, and the current Jackaroos or anyone looking to be a Jackaroo, you can never rest on your laurels. You've got to, you know, you got to be winning and playing and training hard. And guys like Leroy, um, you know, he has played for Australia and, and he deserved to. And um, yeah, he might even still put his finger up one day and say, yep, yeah, I'm available. So if he does, yeah, a few, a few players out there would um, be, be definitely worried, especially opposition countries that if he uh, ever come up against them. Hey, Baz, um, interesting hairdo that you're rolling at the moment. There's a reason behind it. Tell us about it. Describe it to us and why it's so important with your ambassadorship with Endometriosis uh, Australia. The endometriosis is one in eight women worldwide suffer from the condition, not spoken about. Um, and it's unfortunately, it's something that women go through. They they might have some symptoms and not sure what's wrong mm. with them. And they might wait months or even potentially years without get, going to the doctors. And um, my wife and I went through that. And I just thought if I could... Yeah, create a bit of uh, awareness and start the conversation. And uh, when I did that recently, I had the cornrows going with the yellow ribbon, which is the colour that represents endometriosis. And I had messages from people all around the world. And one of the probably best messages was I had it from a, a, a gentleman and said he actually um, went and took his daughter to the doctor and found out that she had it um, because of me uh, uh, raising that awareness. And then the messages I had from people saying, yes, my wife, you know, my mum, my sister, daughter, whatever, have gone through it. So... Um, yeah, we, we need to, with this day and age, with social media, et cetera, or any exposure, um, we can get out there and share the message of things that, you know, we might be battling and or know um, someone's going through. Why not get it out there? And it was a good thing. And um, initially, people thought I was trying to raise money. Not at all. It was just, um, you know, people were coming to me and it was great, the feedback I was getting. So I thank everyone for supporting it and, and helping share the message because it's um, it's not a good thing that these, these ladies go through. Um, with endometriosis, and it's good that we can start the conversation. No, it's brilliantly done, mate. Uh, you, you're so generous with what you do, uh, as I said, both on and off the green. The other thing that you're involved in, and just in the short time we've got left, you're an ambassador for the Bowls Australia Disaster Relief Fund. Just explain the work you've been doing there and the impact it's had. Yeah, well, unfortunately, living in Victoria and competing and, and travelling around as a regional bowls manager for uh, Bowls Australia, I would see affected clubs, whether it be... Uh, I've even gone to bowls clubs that have had people broke in the night before um, or, you know, just fire, flood, anything like that. And um, I remember Bowls Australia would get inundated from clubs saying, you know, can we can we have some money, basically, to, to pay for some of these damages? And, and, yeah, Bowls Australia created the initiative to have a disaster relief fund and any funds in that pool of money goes straight back into any club suffering. So I, I really encourage any clubs out there that are looking to raise money, raise money or 
um, you know, put some uh, dollars together through raffles, etc. Put it into that disaster relief fund. Know you're going to help you out your uh, your neighbouring club and and help them get back on their feet. Baz, always great to catch up with you, mate. Uh, good luck in the singles for the state champs in Queensland, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in the Australian Open, mate. All the best. Thank you. Good on you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, Barry Lester, our first guest tonight. He's a star. Jackaroo has represented his country to uh, with much aplomb uh, throughout his illustrious career, and he's still getting it done uh, week in, week out on the bowls course there. And if you're ever at Burley, go and drop in on him. Uh, he does a ripping job up there uh, on the Gold Coast as well. This is Without Bias. Part of the sporting capital on SEN, local legends wanted. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls clubs near me. And for Apia, dedicated specialists ready to help, call 135050. Apia, get, set, go. Coming up next, uh, really interested in having a chat to this man, General Manager of Participation and Programs, Chris Wallace from Bowls Australia, will join us. Everything that happened as part of COVID, um, no one was unaffected by it. Uh, and the participation at Bowls, how they're recovering, we'll find out next. From the wide outdoors to the great indoors, this is Without Bias. Brought to you by Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. A Bowls green is just up the road. Search Bowls clubs near me. Ah, yes, indeed. Welcome back to Without Bias. We do it all thanks to Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. A Bowls green is just up the road. Search Bowls clubs near me and our very good friends at Apia. Dedicated specialist, ready to help. Call 13 50 50 Apia. Get, set, go. It was great to chat to Barry Lester a little earlier on. And I've been really keen to have this chat uh, during the week as well. When I knew that we were going to be speaking to Chris Wallace, who's the General Manager of Participation and Programs, uh, I was just very keen to hear the work that they've been doing after a COVID hit 2020. How are they going getting people back onto the bowling green in 2021? And Chris has been good enough to jump on the line to speak about that and a whole lot more. Hello to you, Chris. G'day, Sam. It's great to be with you. Uh, the pleasure's all ours. Um, talk us through what last year was and, and how COVID affected participation in... I mean, I think we've already got a pretty good idea. Probably did the same as it did to everyone else, but just give us the details from a, from a bowls point of view. Yeah, you're spot on, Sam. Like many sports, it was tough on a lot of clubs and, and bowlers through 2020, uh, particularly in Victoria, where the lockdown was a bit longer than elsewhere. But... Uh, but on the flip side, while it was difficult in some ways, the break uh, also gave clubs to sort of pause and plan around what they might do on the other side of that interruption. And, uh, and many clubs used the time to do some refurbishments and improvements to their facilities to, to get ready for, for bowls to return. And what role did Bowls Australia play in that? Because I know that there's um, disaster relief that bowls have been really... Uh, sort of, they've just been incredibly philanthropic in in that area and the work they do to make sure there is a fund whenever disaster hits Bowling Greens. Did that come under that, or was there a different way and, and a different avenue for Bowls Australia to help clubs work on their facilities in that time without participation? Yeah, no, Sam, you're right. The disaster relief fund that we've had, I mean, we've been very generous to have support from, from many clubs and individuals for that in the past. And, and off the back of COVID, we repurposed that into a helping hand fund. And, and once again, many of the members of the bowls community and clubs uh, came to the rescue and in support of other clubs who were struggling, uh, you know, off the back of COVID and uh, were able to, to pass on uh, those donations to, to, to many worthy clubs who were able to buy some equipment or to help get things started again. So whether it be some, some new bowls or new things to prepare their greens to, to come back after the break. But, uh, yeah, some fantastic support from, from many people around the country in that front. So, Chris, BPL back. We've had a couple of those. We've got uh, the Australian Championships around the corner in June. So the Nationals, that's going to be incredibly exciting up on the Gold Coast. How has the return to bowls nationally uh, helped participation? Oh, it's exciting to have all those events back on the calendar now and back playing. This is the Bowls Premier League on, on, on TV a couple of times recently. But uh, it's, it's re-energised everyone, I think. And, and Bowls has really bounced back strongly in, in most parts of the country. Um, look, no doubt there's, there's still you know, a few pockets of concern you know, around players' health due to COVID sometimes popping up. But, but largely, look, Bowls is back in similar numbers or, or greater than before the break. And, and you touched on, on some of those events, Sam. And you know, an example of the interest is, is in this year's Australian Open, which uh, has attracted sort of over 2,340 entries. And, and that's now on par with the event we had uh, two years ago pre-COVID, um, once you exclude all the international players that, that could be present this year. But, uh, yeah, it's great to see uh, people on greens all around the country again said stronger than ever before. I remember as a young whippersnapper, uh, whenever, he, whenever we'd head down to visit my grandpa in Langatha or Inverloch when he was down there, 
uh, running a muck at the bowls clubs and uh, and actually played uh, at state level. But whenever we were around the bowls club there, I remember thinking, so this is where all the old people are. Well, haven't times changed, <laughs> Chris, in that bowls now has become incredibly trendy. It's become such a social uh, uh, pursuit. Uh, people, I've been to that many weddings now with a recovery day or the if it's a if it's a wedding away, you go, you meet up on the night before the wedding and everyone gets into some barefoot bowls. It's become such a, a brilliant part of, of the social landscape. And it was a, a, a fantastic innovation from Bowles to, to tap into that. Um, with with what happened with COVID and now with Bowles back, how, has that been again at the forefront of getting people back to their local Bowles greens, Jack Attack and things like that? Absolutely. And yeah, many people would recount stories of like yours, of your use of a, of a bowl, a club experience around a bowling club. And and these days, yes, Barefoot Bowls and uh, and Jack Attack, they're both synonymous with sort of great outdoor fun. Um, you know, these days it's sort of becoming the activity of choice for, for many parties and work functions and, and thousands of people, you know, young and not so young, you know, trying bowls for Absolutely. the first time um, through Barefoot Bowls, the one-off experience or, or finding their local, you know, Jack Attack competition, which is sort of, you know, fun and fast. And, and there's 275 clubs playing Jack Attack around the country now. Oh, that's brilliant. And uh, that's been one avenue that's brought younger people into lawn bowls. And, and it's been like that for a long time. I think people that aren't initiated with bowls, Chris, think that whenever that we hear about the Jackaroos and the national team, and they go, oh, I'll check it. And they expect to turn on the TV and see um, older people, but it's it's not the case. Our national team is is made up of of young young people. I mean, I say that in relative mm. terms, of course, meaning no disrespect to our uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> to our <laughs> yeah. older audience. But um, rookie rollers has been another great innovation too. You, you're only as good as the people you've got coming into the sport, and that's where you you, you get your sustainability from. Talk to us about rookie rollers uh, and the key component that. that plays in bolstering young acquisitions to the world of lawn bowls. Yes, yeah, you spoke that you know many of the, the nation's best players, you know, are, are young themselves and then started even younger, you know, through their teenage years or, or even earlier. So, uh, yeah, look, our vision is to engage with all Australians, you know, with bowls at, at some stage during their lifetime, and that begins with our, our youngest Aussies. So, so via our, our, our rookie rollers program. Um, each year we give uh, over 25,000 primary age students their, their first experience of bowls, you know, through sort of modified soft equipment and, and fun activities to play. And that program has yeah, now gone to, to over 1,000 um, you know, primary schools around the country, which is, you know, about over 10% of schools. And they often have an awesome experience and they go home, they tell the parents and their grandparents about it. And, and then as you appreciate, you know, Sam, you know, bowls is one of those sports that can be played by, by the whole family, you know, all ages and all abilities together. So... So, um, you know, many people come to our sport having tried, you know, playing it once before. So the, the younger they try it, the better. It's a great point, isn't it? There's not many other uh, sports you could say that everyone from the kids to the grandparents can all get out there and play against each other. There'd be very, very few sports that could lay claim uh, to that. Uh, and it's a great point that you make, Chris. We are speaking to Chris Wallace, who's the General Manager of Participation and Programs uh, for Bowls Australia. Um Chris, further to all those initiatives, uh, and before we get to that, actually, roll back the clock. Uh, this is a phenomenal in- program engaging senior Australians I- into regular activity. So those who might not have ever been involved in lawn bowls, there's so many great benefits health-wise uh, and, and, and as far as a, an activity goes to lawn bowls. How can people get involved in roll back the clock? Yeah, look, Roll Back the Clock is one of our newer programs and we're, we're very thankful for some funding from the federal government to, to launch it. Launch it. It, uh, it offers um, senior Australians the opportunity to, to, to uh, the opportunity of light exercise and socialisation in the, in the safe venues of bowling clubs. Um, it's made up of a number of one-hour sessions. It's, it's half an hour of light activity and half an hour of health and wellness education and, and often socialisation as well. Um, many people come to the program they've been a bit inactive or a bit lonely um, but they've made new friends and in lots of cases at the first time many of these people have regularly visited a bowling club but uh, but yeah in terms of how they can get involved um, uh, they can uh, find venues on, on our website bowls.com.au um, just under the, the get involved tab or you can you can search roll back the clock and it only costs um, participants $20 for, for up to eight sessions and um, and they can jump into out of sessions as they like and uh, and there's, yeah, 55 venues around the country um, in, in May and June that are running all back the clock. Further to all this, and it, it must be said that when, when, when you're having these conversations, Chris, it, it's just what stands out is just how proactive Bowls Australia is in, uh, in engaging uh, their current people, new people, um, people that may have been there and left, 
So all these wonderful initiatives. Further to all that, Learn to Bowl. Uh, Australia has recently, Bowls Australia has recently produced a Learn to Bowl video. Where can we find it and how can we get involved with it? Yeah, look, pretty pretty easy to find uh, on our website. But, yeah, look, it's often, as you said, we try to be proactive, but um, but also, you know, in response to our clubs too, was a, a resource requested by, um, you know, a lot of our clubs, given the increase of, of casual and, and barefoot bowls. We, we spoke of earlier, Sam, and, uh, yeah, this is a great resource that, you know, if a club might not have a qualified coach on hand but does want to shoot, show new players just the, the basics to, to get them rolling and having fun, uh, they can show them this uh, learn, learn to bowl video. Um, you know, some clubs are attaching it to their websites or sharing with people when they make a casual bowls booking or uh, at the very least, you know, when a new member joins the club, they can send them this video uh, on a link to, uh, to to get them rolling. And, uh, and yes, yeah, it can be found on our on our website. Uh, so uh, I've learned a bowl video uh, under on our website, which is bowl.com.au. Uh, beautifully done, Chris. Pleasure to catch up with you doing a ripping job, General Manager of Participation and Programs. Thanks for your time. We'll chat to you again soon. Great. Thanks, Sam. Got one of the best jobs in the world. Good to chat to you. Uh, Absolutely. Don't you love it when someone absolutely loves what they do? I think it comes through loud and clear when you're speaking to Chris. Uh, That's almost all we've got time for tonight uh, on Without Bias. We do it all thanks to Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. Search Bowls Clubs near me and for APA proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Our Ride at Home Player of the Week is Aaron Tees. He was immense at BPL 13 Club Pine Rivers, claiming his second MVP crown at the event, uh, right at home, player of the week for age, for right at home, age care at home, right at home, Australia's leading provider of home care and disability support. He helped the Tweed Heads Ospreys clinch their second straight title and third in four events. They've been on fire. Tweed only lost one match through the entire tournament. So very, very worthy winner of our right at home player of the week, right at home for the best quality and disability support, age and nursing care at home.